All right, as you can see here, ladies and gentlemen, I have this metal Beechler alto saxophone mouthpiece. A lot of really good players have played on this, like Gerald Albright, Dave Cause, probably uh, the most popular, Eric Marienthal. So I decided to pick up one for myself. Um, unfortunately, I got this mouthpiece about three years ago, so I don't have the box to show you all of that. But I do remember that it came with a really, really nice pouch. And you get a ligature that comes with it. Uh, this is a pretty good ligature. It's much better than what it looks like it is. Okay. Uh, this is a 7, as I showed you here. Uh, this is my own mouthpiece patch. I wanted to put this on here just to show you guys that the standard size mouthpiece patches don't really fit. So you'll probably need to adjust these in some manner. Let's take a look at the inside. This table looks really flat. These are really well-made mouthpieces. I'm very impressed. Tip looks very even. The rails look very even. Let's take a look on the inside. Sorry about that moisture there. I've been playing this thing. All right, we have these flat sidewalls here. This is definitely a bright mouthpiece. There's not a clear, definable forehead that's on this mouthpiece. I like using face terms because that translates a lot easier into other languages. Let's take a look at this chin area here, this inside window. Okay, here we go. I wanna show you the inside chin area just to show you how that's angled, how it tapers thin to the middle and then flares out on the wings. All right, I just dried this thing out because I didn't want you guys to think that's what the inside of the mouthpiece looked like. Let's do another look from this angle here. Very, very well-made mouthpiece. I never really played on this mouthpiece because ultimately this tip opening was just too open. I bought mine for $365. This was about three years ago. So I have to check to see what they're going for now. Yeah, these are going for almost $500 now. I just saw that they're going for around $475. So this was a pretty sweet purchase. And now I'm thinking I probably don't want to sell this mouthpiece. <laughs> All right, but at any rate, I think the seven is probably one of the more popular tip openings for something like this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's put this thing on the scale and see how much it weighs. All right, and with the ligature, okay. All right, so let's put this thing on an alto saxophone and see what we got. I have this Van Dorn ZZ reed here, so let's play this and see what we got. Okay, this is fantastically resistant. <laughs> now, obviously, this setup isn't quite right for me. And I think with this video, I definitely want to highlight something very important because you can have a really awesome mouthpiece that just isn't playing well for you because of a few things. Mainly, maybe the tip opening is too open. And if that's the case, then maybe in conjunction with that, you're playing on a reed that's too stiff. 
Now, I found that the um, the ZZ reeds are a little stiffer than the green box and the red box from Van Dorn. So, um, with this 7, which really on any reed is going to be a little bit too open for me, but that doesn't mean that this mouthpiece is unplayable. So, I think realistically for me, I would definitely need to go down a tip opening at least probably a whole number. I don't know if they do the half or star system with these, but... I'm going to switch over and, uh, and I'm going to see what that's like. So these number twos in this green box, they don't even make these boxes like this anymore. So this is how long it's been since I've been playing alto. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> control over this instrument simply by moving down a lower strength and trying a slightly different cut of reed so you might quickly dismiss a mouthpiece as being bad or unplayable but it may only just be your setup that's not quite right for your playing let's play a little bit more <laughs> liking this mouthpiece uh, as far as the ligature and playing because of its small size these kinds of mouthpieces definitely need to come with their own ligature it does the job well but I would say it's a pretty okay ligature I don't have any real complaints about it but I would like to move down a tip opening and then really focus on fine-tuning the feel and the sound via the ligature, but overall, I have a good impression with this ligature. <laughs> I'm in the process of rebuilding my website. My website is open right now, but admittedly it's terrible. On my website, I basically want to use that to be able to sell merchandise, uh, t-shirts and all this kind of stuff, and also mouthpieces that I don't play anymore. Realistically, this mouthpiece, the tip is just too open. I if I got a six, this would more than likely be my main mouthpiece. However, um, what am I going to do now? When I got it, I was working on ships and I wasn't able to return it because of our intense travel schedule, but on my website, a lot of tenor mouthpieces that I have, basically anything that I get that I unfortunately cannot return, I have over 40, 50 mouthpieces anyway, so uh, be on the lookout for that, but I'm really, really amazed, and that's what I want you guys to really take home, is that even with mouthpieces that you have that don't quite play right, just experiment putting some different reads on there. Maybe even synthetic reads will work out better for you. All right. See ya.